and then if you win, you're rewarded. If you don't, unlucky. That's the way it is. So yeah, we'll 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 get into those matches tomorrow though, because it's going to be nuts. I don't think I can stress this enough. We're going to be stressed. The players are going to be extremely stressed, and there's going to be a lot going on. So I'm looking forward to that. But let's go into this matchup. It's Felkane versus Psycho. Felkane going to have the Galakon Spell package, the Rogue, Tempo Demon Hunter, and his Spell Druid. Everyone's talking about going up against Psycho's lineup, and I'm just giving Psycho's lineup a quick glance over, as he has been known in the past to bring the spice himself along with Viper. Uh, he's going to be playing. Uh, he does have the Druid list, but he is running the uh, the Kel'thas, similar to what we saw from Yala. I think the list might be exact, actually, the list that Yala had as well. So interesting to see that out once again. And he is going to have that Quest Warlock, so we get to deep dive to these matchups once again. So. Yeah, looking forward to seeing Psycho play some Quest Warlocks. He's a player that I do have a ton of respect for. He is also, as you mentioned, on that one Soulfire list with the Warlocks. So it does seem like he's come out with uh, suspiciously similar lists to what uh, Yala and Hunter Ace have come up with. So it, yep. I'd be willing to stick my neck out here and say that they prepared together this week. Yeah, or they are just genius level that they've come to the exact same outcome, which would be yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we do see the list Felkane is playing. And this is more of the list you would expect to see uh, on ladder and also just more of the Grandmasters playing. Just the steady Ysera at the top, uh, one of Savage Raw, one of Soul of the Forest, which again, Psycho's list runs two Soul of the Forests. Mm -hmm. But there's still those two rising winds in there as well. So. This is much more the standard spell druid list to the squad, so we get to see what the different builds do. Uh, do they do? Gonna find out. Going to, we uh, we're certainly close are. To and this could end up being a huge win for Felcane and also a huge win for Hunter Ace and Silvername for opposite reasons, because Felcane is currently in sixth position in Division A, which means he's sitting just outside of that uh, relegation bracket position with Hunter Ace and Silvername currently occupying spots 7 and 8. If Felkane wins here, he just goes clear. He goes to three wins, and that means Silvername would be completely unable to catch him. Hunter Ace can maybe catch him on Tiebreaker 2, um, but Hunter Ace's Tiebreaker 2 sucks right now. He has one win, and it is against the one player that has won one match, which is Silvername. So his Tiebreaker right. 2 is one. It's the lowest it can possibly be, having won a match. Um, so Felkane with a win here can really start to turn it into a two-horse race mm -hmm. between uh, between Hunter Ace and Silvername. And unfortunately, in that two-horse race, they're both going into the relegation <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, it's a bit awkward of a two-horse race when there are two losing spots and no winners. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be pretty crazy overall. And yeah, it is just close there with Felkane on there. Uh... Uh, two wins, Psycho on three means when they play each other, things can work out pretty even. We'll see how it goes out. The first matchup is going to be that Druid versus Demon Hunter, though. So again, we'll see if we either get the crazy game that we saw earlier on with Bunny Hopper, or we're going to see a much more regular expectation of Demon Hunter versus Druid. So we'll see as that comes up. I will just double check. Yep, the Demon Hunter list uh, is, is running that one mana burn, which is pretty close brother. to actually. Nice. Respecting Psycho being a cardigan gamer here. <laughs> it's been a while since I was subtle in a cardigan. Yeah. You think Trade I'm wearing mark. a cardigan in this room? In no. this heat? In no. this economy? No. <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The old days when you used to be uh, the cardigan boys, Sotl and Pavel. Hell yeah. The dream team. Already, though, there is that Fungal Fortunes in Falcane's hand. So whenever you have that card, you don't necessarily feel safe versus Demon Hunter, but you get in there, right? It gives mm -hmm. you something good to do on turn two, and it unlocks a lot of the potential going forward as well. I thought Psycho could have a good opening himself. Help with that twin slide. He's going to be able to use the Umber Wing to actually clear off the uh, the threat and keep this Battle Mage alive. And that was it. What, what do you think about that, Sol? The the Panther versus the Fungal Fortunes. Obviously, it was to contest the 2 2, 
But do you think that's uh, something that pays off a lot of the time, or do you think it was more important for Falcon to cross some cards? It's... I mean, he needed to occupy turns between now and the turns he's popping off anyway, right? Like, he had these weird dead turns where even if he were to fungal fortunes on two, he didn't necessarily have a plan on three. And he looks right. like he's curving all the way through, skipping the uh, the overgrowth. Sorry, skipping the fungal fortunes for the overgrowth. Um, but I think the answer is both to your question. I think it is something that rarely works, but it is also something that you know is worth going for on the odd occasion it does work because it's going to save you six, eight, ten damage over the course of the game if you're able yep. to kill that two two on turn one. I gotta see nice. The crystal power is drawn for Falcon is huge. I mentioned earlier today. Crystal power against Demon Hunter just so often gets the job done. Uh, whether it's killing the uh, the two health threats, mainly the Sator, or just healing you up for a very very cheap amount of time. But Falcon is getting there, but he needs to almost like actually draw Mount Seller or exactly overflow next to him. Uh, demons, <sighs> demons. Oh, Twin just... Flies coin Glaive Bound. Oh. It's just so much damage already. Yeah. Like, you can just legitimately be counting damage here, especially after you just saw a Crystal Power come down as well. Overflow just will not react to the board state, and I think playing the 4th health, health minion is pretty key here because this is the turn where, you know, Bog Beam becomes active. Yeah, this turn sucks. Pretty rare when, you know, you have three cost and two cost spells that have been discounted to zero in your hand and your hand is what? still just miserable. Yeah. I don't even know what the answer here is because the problem is if you if it's Bog Beam Crystal Power from Falcane, then it, it might, like, make him not die this turn, but it removes the power of some of his draws next hmm. turn and the draws that might win him the game. Really tough. You gotta just go at everything in. Make a Panther and then Iron Bark, I guess. I think he's gonna hold the Iron Bark and try and pay it off with the the bigger minion. Rip exactly in a fate. Yeah, in a fate next turn. <laughs> yeah, he can also draw Mount Cellar. He can also draw Overflow. They'll help him get there. And just do this as well. Save the twin slice for next turn uh, with the Altrius. It means that this is not looking too good for Felcane, and we might be off to a very quick start in this series. Oh! Oh! He actually, he actually did! My dream. <laughs> he actually ripped exactly innovate! Wow. Is he still Look dead? Felcane's face! That is literally the face everyone makes in this scenario. He's still dead, Raven. <laughs> it's still funny, though. Is he? You Can you do 50? The Foul Fiend does help. He can do hero power and still get that extra damage with the Altrius. Five, right. yeah, six. Ten yeah, 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 you're chilling. Absolutely <laughs> chilling. Oh, okay, did get it, and you've got to respect <laughs> it. It just doesn't matter whether it worked or not. He got it, and he did need Psycho to do a lot of work there, actually, to get that job done that turn. He might have won anyway in, you know, a turn or two's time, but you never know what you're doing. One overflow could have changed everything if Falcane had that one more turn. Psycho does take the victory with the Demon Hunter, even though it looked a little bit crazy towards the end there. But that's one of the problems, right? If you... And that was my question as to whether Fungal was actually something, even though it feels bad, that you have to do on turn two to just give yourself the best draws and most draws possible earliest in the game. Because the problem with the 3-2 is I feel like it dies so often or they just kill it with a 2-2 fight and then play another minion, play more threats. It doesn't really slow them down. I did wonder if Fungal into Crystal Powers earlier on or maybe just to try and get closer to a Glowfly would have been a bit stronger. But I think, honestly, the way those draws went for Felcane. It was just one of those games you lose as Druid.
Yeah, and I think he played a logical curve, right? Because he yes, he, yes. he tried to put something on board to slow down damage so that he could afford to play Overgrowth and then tried to play Fungal Fortunes after that where he'd have the mana available to perhaps immediately use some of the spells that he drew into. Whereas you can make the argument where if you Fungal Fortune's on two, it's not really like you have the hand that you you have the mana to be able to play any right. of those cards anyway. Even if you draw Glowfly Swarm, you're sat doing nothing for three turns waiting for it to happen. Um, so I get the logic behind what he did, but I think, you know, I just want to focus on how miserable that matchup seems to be because it doesn't seem to matter how the Druid plays it or how the Demon Hunter plays it. You just seem to die either way. Like we just saw Bunny, Hunt, Bunny Hopper play Control Demon Hunter and win that matchup against mm. the same deck he's playing against. And that was just outright aggro with a completely different hand from Psycho as well. And that's still one. We've seen the Altruist just blowing up Glowfly Swarm, still winning. We've seen Glowfly Swarms come back down, but there's just an insane Battle Fiend start and that still wins as well. Like it just, it just seems everything Demon Hunter does wins in that matchup. Yeah, it's tough. And we've seen Druid win the matchup sometimes as well, because if it gets those uh, the glow flies off and Demon Hunter does, isn't either already incredibly ahead or doesn't have a good answer, you can build on that very well. It's just that that almost exact... It's kind of like the Hunter matchup, I feel. Like, that exact outcome has to happen or you die. Uh, anything else is just too slow and not quite good enough. So it's very interesting. I think it's very difficult for the Druid, and we're probably going to be seeing more of it over the course of this weekend. But for now, we're going to go to a quick break while we set up game number two. So don't go anywhere, and we'll be right back with some more Hearthstone Remaster. Mmm. Mmm. これって乗り、ハーストストンに乗りたいって意味でいいのか。オッケー。レミフィン。どうじゃりよ。金ピエンジュンへチェリケタリオと。生命が調子良いこうかてがじゅこ。おいがおいしい。なんかなんかすごい安いいわ。日本語で言うとたたなんかドンハトルシャーとベコ。因為他騎上あ、いがいえ、マンクール。アルチス。ファーストストンのカード
We are back and ready to continue this series. And it's going to be an exciting one here as we go for Psycho versus Felkane. And uh, Psycho just getting a very quick win there with the Demon Hunter. Felkane just didn't really have anything to do in that game. Did have the, the dramatic uh, Ysera with the exact, with the help of the Innovate and the Taunt. But it just wasn't enough as the uh, Psycho managed to punch through. But we are going to get to some of the more, I would say, like the, the spicier matchups and the more questionable matchups, right? We're going to now have the West Warlock that has not been performing this weekend uh, versus the Rogue from Falcane. That would be number two. A quick check just for the Rogue. It uh, looks fairly straightforward. Stealth package. There's a Frozen Shadow Weaver in there. And he faces corrupt. But outside of that, nothing <laughs> too crazy. But subtle. What are you making of this quest, Warlock? <laughs> well, I mean, it's been getting destroyed all weekend. I don't know what you really want me to say. <laughs> It's been getting absolutely dumpstered match after match after match. Um, but I still believe in it. And I think, um, like I said, in the previous series, when we were, were watching it go up against the questing list of Rogue, I think this Rogue list in particular is a matchup where you feel a lot more secure playing the Quest Warlock, especially from Psycho seeing Dark Skies in the opening hand here, which is huge. And now a questing explorer joins the party as well. Um, so maybe, maybe this is finally Quest Warlock's moment in the sun. We'll have to find out. I will say, though, I think this is one of the matchups I generally do try and do the Quest Explorer on turn four. Uh, because playing Ooh, into the, the road uh, turns can be a little bit tough. Although, Psycho is uh, not on the play. That right. Just push it over. It's tough, right? Because with the coin, I don't know. It gets a little bit tricky at this point with the Quest Explorer, right? I still think it can end up fine, though, because Psycho might be just dropping Dark Skies on turn three here, so he could still just life tap and then Dark Skies away the board on three and then mm. proceed as normal from there. Okay. Depends what if Felkane well? wants to continue to develop into this or not. If he doesn't, it's going to be a very sad-looking plot twist. Uh, sorry, very sad-looking Dark Skies from Psycho. But if Felkane does continue to develop, just drops Frozen Shadow Weaver on curve. The frustrating part as well is for Psycho is... Not as if, at the moment... Never mind. Uh, I was going to say he could pass up not Dark Skies in because this Spy Mistress is just killing him <laughs> right now. So he would have had to have dealt with it one way or the other, but tapping into the Mortal Coil makes it uh, uh, maybe a little bit more straightforward. Yeah, now he can go Coin Coil into tap, into Questing Tap, and just hope that there's not too much pressure coming down on the, on the other side to allow him to just progress through that. Even if there is pressure, he does have that Dark Skies, as we were talking about. It so yeah, it looks like he's bought himself a ton of time with that one Mortal Coil. The, the, yeah, yeah, the Shadow Weaver, not to be sniffed at as a 4-3, it's going to deal even more damage, so... Psycho just being a... Okay, just has a curve, though. It's so weird to see Rogue do this. Yeah. It's just, like, just a hard curve out minions. Just playing Highlander Hunter with Rogue right now, just mm. biggest minion on curve. Get going. Of course it's the right way. I'll go for the tap into the quest explorer, keep the hand size high, but not go for that plot twist quite yet. Bubble, right. Bubble. You'll hear debates over whether you're questing first or tap first in that scenario. Various implications as to what you would rather draw. If you want to have like a double questing turn, for example, then you can questing first and try and hit the other questing. But I think when hand size isn't as much of a deal, I think it becomes a little bit simpler as well. Yeah. Like there aren't that so many things that you would want to like specifically uh, draw into with questing. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's working out whether he wants to rush or not. Good to with his goblin line. Uh, pretty spicy looking crazy netherwing to clear up the crazy netherwing on the other side and now psycho can start curving himself if he wants to he can give up on the uh, quest game plan for just a couple of turns and start developing some big bombs in his own right there is no of course blackjack stunner in felkane's list because he's playing stealth and not secrets yep is obviously the the biggest answer to those huge abyssal summoner taunts okay and also now using up this Bobble Blackie with a Shadow Step. Kill off this Netherwing and leave this Shield of Galakrond at least reasonably safe. Yeah. 
Just put, use up a shadow step though for that. It's a little bit scary. <laughs> Look what I brought. Well done. Now Felkane does have the flick for this abyssal, but Psycho is running the two. And uh, unfortunately for Felkane, you can't flick away a minion that doesn't exist yet. Uh, so if you flick this demon, it means the second one still spawn. Right. But oh, still worthwhile. Even if this just reads six mana, kill that. Now we're getting to the point where Quest Warlock Psycho has to start considering being dead soon. Start Remember, considering playing... being dead. Okay, I've considered yeah, but... it, and I would like to not be dead. There we go, see? And then it goes from Psycho maybe heavily tapping, playing for a lot for this plot twist and quest activation, to having to just think about how he can heal. And this plot twist means he's going to throw Moag back, but he has a lot of good draws here to help him out. Even just a nether breath is pretty good right now. Dark Sky is good draw. That is a pretty nice outcome, actually, because now he has life tap Dark Skies for the nine that he needs for the clear. That's enormous. And he's sitting on 20, which is uh, more than enough right now. Yep, and that's his 19th card being drawn off the life tap, which then means natural draw oh, next God. turn is card number 20. Uh, and it beautifully opens, done. Opens up your turn so much as well when you don't have to like tap to, pro to finish the quest, then tap again. Yep. So even though the card you draw is free, it's still spent oh, more of your mana. This is what... Peak quest warlock performance looks like Raven. It's a shame we only see it, you know, once every ten games or so. Yeah. This Twilight Drake just to have a card you can play now. I guess you can set up for Alex. Yeah, I like it. Alex oh. Trouser is just a surprisingly powerful card against Quest Warlock. The amount of times they just scam themselves back to full health. Once you see those cards, you can just drop them right back down again. Place to hide. That was actually really nice. The uh, Wasteland Warden thing? No, <laughs> wrong card. Wasteland Assassin. That's it. Wasteland Zephyrus is active, by the way. 13 cards remaining, which means it is. that is also active. Of course. Oh my goodness. I can't have the best struggle of having just lot. too many good things to do. <laughs> just play it all. Abyssal summon a giant taunt, make space in your hand, two dragons go in with Dragon Queen Alex Straza, get two playables, win the game. <laughs> Okay. You're good playables as well. They're not the, the crazy legendaries, but honestly, drawing more cards, putting another taunt in the way. Yeah, more than good enough. Yeah, it does just we weirdly stop. mean that he ends up with 10 cards in his hand at the end of the turn, though, which is the one thing he would oh. have liked to avoid. Oh, no. Such yeah. an unfortunate turn for yeah, Psycho. Yeah, yeah. How unlucky. <laughs> What a sorry, shame. What's, what, sorry, what's that? My opponent died? Yeah, 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 but I burned a card this turn. Can we talk about yeah. how unlucky I am? Yeah. <laughs> you are too late. This is and a double taunt means that this Alex suddenly looks a lot worse. <laughs> he could just Zephyrus bloodlust this board next turn. <laughs> This game was not okay, Raven. Now Falcane has to seriously consider being dead. Yep. And I've considered it. And yep, he's dead. <laughs> the face tank as well. Right, dead. Just gonna be it, right? He's dead. Oh no, no Kelidan though. Yeah, he still has uh, the, ne the fact that he can Nether Breath as well. Just it, it, an insane amount of damage. And honestly, this might make look. Uh, I can't even speak, it's so crazy. This might make Quest Warlock look like the best deck in the game. This never happens, okay? 
this is a, a unique experience. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You won't see it for a while, probably. <laughs> but Psycho is going to rush to a 2 and 0 lead. And what a game. Not only just having the plot twists, but also just having the, the Zephyrus and Alex active was insane. Obviously, life tapping into a zero mana Alex Straza is strong, but that's what the deck does post quest, right? The deck taps into zero mana powerful cards. But just the fact it was active, I think if it was just an 8 8 and that's all it did, it's still an insane turn. But the fact it was live was absurd. Just stole the game there for Psycho. I uh, don't know how many people saw it, but I posted a screenshot of my testing versus TJ where I Zephyrus Consecrate cleared his uh, Demon Hunter board with mm. 17 cards left remaining in my deck while testing that matchup. So I've got Psycho beat on that one, but I did not quite get the uh, power play of the tap into the zero right. cost Alex Straza to round that off as well. But yeah, that was absolutely absurd from Psycho. And I will say that yes, Quest Rogue, uh, sorry, Quest Warlock has got absolutely destroyed. And I'm not defending it. And I said right at the beginning of our first week, uh, first day of the week that it was probably going to happen because it was being so hard targeted by a lot of the matchups. But we've also seen multiple occasions where players were five out of six to win the game and they've discarded the, the additional soul fire. We've also right. seen multiple occasions where the exact opposite of that happened and they drew absolute trash throughout the entire game and nothing happened. So... You know, just factoring that one insane high roll into the stats, it's not like that's invalid. Like, that's what the stats cover. They cover all ends of the spectrum, whether people are getting lucky or unlucky. Exactly, and that's why, it's, yeah, for me, it gets exciting the more we see, right? Because it's just the more games get played by good players. So uh, get to see that too. Uh, we'll get to see that continue over the course of the rest of the weekend. But now the game, the guys have just got straight back into the next game. Psycho on this Druid, his only deck left to win with. Maybe the hardest one now that Quest Warlock's gone. Oh, Grab a win with Rose Falcon on this team number. So we're going to see how bad the matchup seems to be. We're with you. And if there's any hand that might just be able to get there, it's this one from Psycho. Double overgrowth into Mount Cellar plus a bunch of, at that point, incredibly cheap spells. But the problem is, Falcane's just put the problem minion in the way. And the problem yes. minion is Sator Overseer. Sator Overseer is about hmm. the only must-kill minion in the early game. You can leave a Battle Fiend up to keep on trucking. But that thing, that represents too much damage over time to be leaving, hanging around. Yep, and the list just don't run Starfall anymore. So there's not a way of going, okay, I'll coin Overgrowth and maybe I'll draw Starfall to, to snap back here. Oh, it's just not going to happen. Again. <laughs> this... Disgusting. We're with you. At least to me, Sotol. So, yeah, and, and to Psycho as well. There isn't even a consideration for bog beaming that thing down. The okay. ramp has to happen because now there is actually still exotic mount seller, coin, bog beam. And, you know, maybe the card off the top of Psycho, so there is still a way he can uh, fight back. Yeah, he would really like that card off the top to be an Innovate at this point. Because then he right. has Bog Beam, Coin, Innovate, Fungal Fortunes into more stuff. And more stuff is going to be required because this board is way too big to be messing around with right now. On Falcane's side of the board. Blowfly Swarm ain't it. Ooh. No, but can he just Fungal Glowfly now instead? And try and do the Mount Cell thing next turn. Maybe he actually fungles and uses a bog beam on the four two. How curious. Maybe that's just better. Feels bad because Mount Cell is so good versus Demon Hunter. But mm. the Mount Cell turn right now is too weak, I think. I think he has to utilize this fungal glowfly turn. Still drop moon fires, which would help a little bit. So many contradictions. Gets him closer to an overflow, maybe. Gets him mainly closer to the iron box. But any cheap spells you draw, you have to end up using immediately to relieve the pressure anyway, right? So you don't even get yourself a good mount seller turn the next turn. Right, but you might by doing it this way, you might not need a good mount seller turn. Low. Okay. So in that right, case, he's just going to double it, bog beam here. Yeah, yeah sure. it's this, sure. this board's just like, yes, might not be single minion by minion as strong, but it's just better, right, than a, than a halfway mount seller turn. Sure. 
Gives him a chance. I mean, we can see that there's Warglaives there. Now there's the Skull of Gul'dan off the top if he really wants it. Set up for the Altrius, but most importantly, there isn't an Altrius player here. No. I think this might have just given Psycho the best chance he possibly has, mm. which is weird, because don't get me wrong, Mount Seller is 100% the way you want to go against Demon Hunter because of the high and variable life uh, of the, the minions. Yeah. There is just a Warglaives, though, before we get too carried away. So yeah, no, no, there is, there is. Felcane is not struggling too much here, but he would really love to not have this problem to solve I right now and just be happily impatient. jamming all of his damage into Psycho's face and not having to think about Hearthstone. So right now, he's having to think real hard about Hearthstone, and no one wants to be doing that in his mm -hmm. scenario. I play Hunter. Warglaives. Uh, exactly. Uh, it's not going to be used here. not going to be used to clean up. Falcon, I think, just setting up for an uh, essentially uber uh, Altrius turn. Yeah. Oh. 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 Uh, I'm just making noises now, but oh. Wind slice twice with an Altrius. Yeah. High health and any minions you can make. Yep. I mean, you say that. I supply only the finest creatures. There is one significantly min a minion that's significantly larger than most here. Oh, we got a card. Okay, it's fine with this though. Nine health on the mount cellar. Four twin slice procs at a minimum going off here with the sightless watcher. That's five procs total. It's also five damage on Felcane's face. Yep, and also gets through the taunt. Yep. The, the scary part is he had to swing in with his weapon. Well, his attack, hero attack. Those it was to be a disaster. Sightless Watcher for Chaos Strike, I imagine, there. Mm -hmm. So now, does he actually go face? Never. I just didn't know with Warglaive's Chaos Strike, do you just hit through the stuff anyway? Mm. To get lethal? Ah, that's a good point, actually. That is a good point. And you've just seen Double Bog Beam. You've seen Crystal Powers, you know. Yep. Well, I mean, that's kind of why I was like, just kill the minion, because you've seen all that removal. So at that point, this board just sticks, so because you've seen all the removal. But I guess you can also look at it the other way. The Cliff Nose version is that Felcane is miles ahead right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, clutch. Nutty. <laughs> I just... Any time Moonfire is in Druid, I just love it. Oh. It's such a weird card, but it's seen so much play yeah. over the course of, you know, like the years of Hearthstone. It's so funny. Love it. I think that's where my point was, though, with four swings of this Warglaive uh, that hits for poor six. Right. What would have to happen to make this Warglaive not just the hit for lethal? Right. The fires of vengeance right. burn bright. The fires of vengeance burn bright. Well, you couldn't have hit a 515 four times because you're at 20. You wouldn't have needed to. You would have only needed to hit it three times. So, yeah. Yeah, maybe face again, was like, just the place after all. Yeah, and again, like that's like lit uh, obviously you have to consider it, but that's like literally with a f only a few cards from Psycho, the exact outright to just put the big taunt in the way. Mm -hmm. There's an iron bark, but no minions to couple it with. Unless I'm missing How something, curious. it looks like we're going to be going to a game number four. What, 15 next turn, just straight up? Yeah. Psycho can't see it all, so he's just considering yeah. what his best play is on average. But yeah, Falcane has this covered by quite some distance here. He gives the big sigh of relief. Because remember, Falcane is potentially fighting for survival here from his perspective. He knows a win can send him clear of that relegation bracket zone, which right now he is just outside of, looking down at Hunter Ace and Silvername below him. But he is by no means secure. Uh, without a win in this series here. But I 
I'm just going to say it, Raven. That matchup is impossible. You just can't win. You cannot win as Druid. It can't be done. If that hand lost, how do you win that matchup as Druid? Tell me. Well, they don't draw double Sater before turn five <laughs> is, is one thing, I guess, that helps. Okay. But, um, but yeah, uh, honestly, because I've been jamming some Druid the past couple of days, I'm running to a couple of Demon Hunters, as you can imagine, on ladder. And the way I've won it is I Glowfly, they don't clear the whole board, and then I just double Savage roll them. <laughs> so I've got the job done on my end. And it's not happened often, I'll put that out there right say, now. That um, sounds consistent. Yeah, let's just do yeah. that. I'll, I'll tell you a secret, it's not. Um, yeah. But like I said, if you're asking me how the game can be won, it's that or, of course, just the insane uh, Mount Cellar turns. Uh, and I think there's a big deal. Although Crystal Power looks fantastic to kill off uh, Satyrs, the games where you don't have to use Crystal Power, you can use a Wrath, you can use even just a forced Bug Beam for three mana. Um, if you have the Crystal Powers to heal, Job's it done. allows you to play the game for a little bit longer as well. Psycho here was not did not keep uh, Glowfly Swarm in the Druid Mirror uh, while going first, which is an interesting talking point because I think anyone that's watched any APAC will understand how this mirror works. Generally, if one player just gets big Glowfly Swarm down first, the other player is completely unable to react to it because their deck isn't equipped to do so, and then you just win from there. Um, but key point is Psycho was going first and had no other ramp in his hand. So if you're going first and you have no ramp in your hand, you are just going to naturally play a Glowfly Swarm on turn five. Your opponent, who has at the very least the coin in their hand, is going to, on average, do that quicker than you. So I think without ramp, he should just be mulliganing for the, the fungal fortunes and the ramp. Yeah, a couple of big differences as well in the list. Mainly I want to point out that Psycho is running two Soul of the Forest and two Savage Rolls, which just means that if you do land there, especially a Soul of the Forest, that it does just become unclearable a lot of the time on top of that Glowfly. So makes that a little bit more light. Not really as much of the early stuff, uh, the one of Rising Winds, for example, but so far Psycho's doing a great job of ramping and <laughs> Mount Cellar, Overflow, Iron Bark. It's all there. So. Oh, Falcane is just so fun to watch. Maggle. You won't understand that reference at all. Don't worry about it. I was going to say, like, look, I know there are a lot of references I don't understand. I'm not even close to that one. I don't even know what you just said. That's so, I mean, that's such a deep cut. Like, if anyone watching understood that reference, oof. I supply only the they get one high five from Sol. They do indeed, yeah. Now, here we go. Crystal power, why not a griffin? Iron bark as well. It does only have one health. Is there ever a consideration? The is right, I'm just saying, is there ever a consideration to recycle this griffin into a different minion with the pop beam, since it only has one health? I think this is okay. Sure. If your opponent doesn't play anything that can you can bog beam next turn, you're probably feeling pretty good about life, honestly. So I think you're gonna get the beast no matter what. Innovate coin just to make space and then fungal fortunes. <laughs> Yeah, this is how much of a skip this matchup is when your opponent gets onto the board first. And in this fashion as well. With that Mount Cellar be almost immortal, honestly, with, with 11 health against Druid. Hmm. The Wrath can be used to clean up this Griffin and draw more cards, though. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just more damage that isn't going into a Mount Cellar. Just gotta throw everything at the Mount Cellar, right? That's the problem. But then Overflow, if you just if you half kill it, try and set up right. for a two-turn clear. Like, what does that achieve against Overflow? Yeah, and honestly, we... well, I was gonna say. I think the answer to that question is if your opponent has Overflow, like GG, buddy. Next game, right? You know, like... <laughs> I, I was gonna say, without sounding too uh, pessimistic, without Falcon actually building a big board, so Glowfly or somehow, obviously, couldn't that turn, but yeah. somehow fighting back with his own Mount Cellar. You're just not going to win. It, it sounds a bit harsh, a bit, a bit, maybe a bit boring, oh, but uh, oh, that's just the outcome. Oh, this pop-off, though! The rarely seen double Mount yeah. Cellar? Cross that off your uh, your Hearthstone bingo, because uh, I've had that one on, on my card for a while. He doesn't even have room for all these beasts! I don't think I've ever seen a double Mount Cellar. I'm being serious. I think this is the first time I've seen them both on the board at the same time. 
I can see. This, oh, like yeah. I said, there's, just, there's nothing Felcane can do. Psycho takes the victory. Goes up for four and three score in Division A there. But there's just nothing he can do because you need a turn to build a board. Then you need to hope your opponent doesn't just use his turn to clear the board. And then you can start doing things with Savage Draw, with AoE buffs, with the removal tools. And that, unfortunately, is just how uh, almost black and white the Druid Mirror match is. If you have a board and they don't, then you're doing fantastic. And even if they can scramble together a plan, it's at minimum a two-turn plan, assuming you do not have removal yourself, which is unlikely at that point in the game. So congratulations to Psycho getting the win. Uh, it was a pain to watch for Felcane, and just imagine the world we can live in. Well, Felcane's been in Grandmaster Season 3 only, as one uh, of the uh, newer players, and then he can go out through Division A relegation. Oh. I refuse to accept it. He's way too fun to watch to be getting relegated in one series. I want Felkane to stick around. Um, but that does bring him one step closer, as you mentioned, because that, mm -hmm. that series has two major implications now. Firstly, Psycho is now giga-locked for playoffs. He pretty much was beforehand as well, but he's now absolutely 100% nailed in. No way that Psycho will be down in that relegation bracket come the end of proceedings. But now, secondly, Falcane has now become the standing target because that was his seventh match that he's now played. And his standing total now sits at two wins, which means that is all that Hunter Ace and Silvername are chasing down. Silvername himself only has one match left. So if Falcane could have got to three, Silvername would not be able to catch right. him on three. Hunter Ace still has two matches left to play. And both of those players, Silvername and Hunter Ace respectively, both have one win to their name, which means because Felcane lost there with his fate in his own hands, he is now much, much easier to chase down for both of those players. Yeah, it, it's, it's going to get intense tomorrow is all I'm going to keep telling you because it's true. We are going to see uh, Hunter Ace play later today. One of his matches, obviously, with two matches left, it means they have to play today and tomorrow. So we'll see him a little bit later on. But for now, as we are just past halfway through the day here in the European Grandmasters, we're going to go for a break and set up our match number four. So uh, we'll be uh, back shortly with that match. Don't go anywhere.